একটি আত্মজীবনীমূলক নাটক যে সাংকেতিকভাবে বা প্রতীকীভাবে মায়ের আধ্যাত্মিক যাত্রাকে উপস্থাপন করে এখানে যিনি নায়িকা তিনি নিজেই মাকে প্রতিনিধিত্ব করেছেন তিনি যোগ ও অধ্যাত্মবাদের মাধ্যমে উপলব্ধ এক বৃহত্তর জগতের সন্ধান পান এবং সেই কারণে তিনি পারিবারিক জীবন ছেড়ে যাওয়ার এক চূড়ান্ত সিদ্ধান্ত গ্রহণ করেন তিনি এক মহান আবেগের স্বপ্নকে বাস্তবায়িত করার জন্য স্বীকৃত সামাজিক প্রথার বিরুদ্ধে যান যা দৈহিকভাবে গভীর ভালোবাসার প্রতিনিধিত্ব স্বরূপ বিশ্বের উৎপত্তি সাল বিদ্যমান দ্য প্লে টুয়ার্ডস দ্য ফিউচার ইজ এন অটোবায়োগ্রাফিক্যাল স্ক্রিপ্ট which symbolically represents the mother's spiritual journey. The protagonist, she, represents the mother herself, who took the decision to leave behind the family life in search of a greater realization through yoga and spiritualism. She goes against accepted social conventions in order to realize her dream of a great emotion that could physically represent the deep love which is at the origin of the world. মার্ভেলস কজ উইচ ইস সো ডিয়ার টু মি 
to relieve suffering of humanity, to awaken it to its capacities and its true goal and ultimate transformation. I can see that something great, something out of the ordinary rules your life. But as I do not know what it is, it seems rather mysterious to me. Of course, I owe an explanation. I must tell you about it in detail. But that will take some time. Would you like me to come and visit you? What an excellent idea! Nothing could please me more. When will you come? Would you like to come today? Yes. I would be very glad to do so. I always find a deep joy in speaking of the marvelous teaching that guides our life and directs our wills. Just now, I have a few things to arrange so that when my husband returns from his walk, he will have everything ready. And as soon as he has started his work, I can go out and I shall see you. Very well. Then, goodbye. I shall see you soon. Ah, there he is. Did you have a pleasant walk? Yes, thank you. I have found an ending for my poem. It came while I was walking. A little activity in the open air really does help the inspiration. Yes, I think this will be good. I end with a song of triumph, a hymn of victory in praise of the evolved man who has discovered, together with the consciousness of his origin, the knowledge of all that he is capable of doing and the power to realize it. I describe him advancing in the happy splendor of union towards the conquest of earthly immortality. It will be beautiful and truly universal. Don't you think? It's high time that I should stop being a justification for ugliness and defeat. What a happy day it will be when poetry, painting and music express only beauty, victory and joy, leading the way towards the realization of future, towards the advent of a world in which falsehood and suffering, ugliness and death will be no more. But there's still existing anguish and there is solitude. It is terrible. Each one has his burden to bear. Come what may, whether he wants it or not. Come, set to work. You know that is the best cure for sadness. I am going to leave you to your inspiration. I promised my friend that I would go and spend the afternoon with her and tell her something about the marvelous teaching that guides our life. We shall probably read together some of those pages that are so full of profound truth. To meditate on these things is a great joy to both of us. Oh, how well you say these things. You say them like one who has experienced them very deeply. I shall make a note of them for my next book, which will deal with education for me. Well then, I shall start my work. Goodbye. Work well. Always the same kind and affectionate attentions. She never fails in her care and her sweetness. When I look at her, it's like seeing a light. Her intelligence and kindness shine so brightly around her, spreading to all who are near her, whom she guides towards nobler horizons. I admire her. I feel a deep respect for her. But all that is not love. Love. What a dream. Will it ever become a reality? A master of music came with intent to give me a lesson on my instrument. I thanked him for nothing, bid him be gone. For my little fiddle must now be played on. My thing is my own and I'll keep it so still. All the young lasses can do what they will. My thing is my own and I'll keep it so still All the young lasses can do what they will What a wonderful voice Hello? Who's there? It's you! Hello old friend! What good woman brings you here? I had something to tell you 
I met your wife and she told me you were in your sanctum. So I am here. You did the right thing. So come into the sanctum, as you call it, and speak. Don't keep me in suspense. Is it about the painting? No, my painting is going well. But I shall tell you about that another time. It's about music. Yesterday evening, when visiting some friends, I heard a true singer who I am told is your neighbor. Do you know her? Hmm, no. But I often hear her singing from here. She has a superb voice. A voice that stirs all the fibers of my being. The very first time it struck my ears, it sounded familiar to me. Like an echo from very ancient times. For nearly six months, I have been hearing this voice, which forms a kind of pleasant accompaniment to my work. I very often wished to become acquainted with the owner of such a beautiful voice. What a wonderful coincidence. Yesterday evening, I was introduced to this young lady, and she seems to be very charming indeed. We had a long chat together, and in the course of conversation, she seems to express her admiration of her poetry, which she seems read with enthusiasm. She also told me that she is all alone in life, that she has to fend for herself, and that sometimes it's difficult to pull through, and so on. She dreams of becoming a good concert singer. I immediately thought of you and all your connections. Everyone knows how obliging you are. So, I volunteered to speak to you about her, and to ask if you could introduce her to a few well-known musicians or composers. That is why I have come. You did just the right thing. It will be a great pleasure for me to do something for her. So, what did the two of you decide? It was arranged that, if you agreed, I would go and fetch her immediately. It is not very far and bring her to you so that you may get to know each other. Perfect. Go and fetch her. I shall wait for you. How strange, how strange. There is no such thing as chance. Everything is the effect of causes that are simply beyond our control. The power of affinity. Who knows? I'm curious to know whether the singer is as beautiful as a voice. Here they are. Oh, how pretty she is. Mademoiselle, may I introduce my friend, the well-known poet whom you admire so much? I am very happy to meet you, Mademoiselle, and to be able to tell you how much I admire your beautiful voice, which you use with such artistry. You are very kind, Monsieur, and I thank you. You will excuse me, won't you, for coming with so little ceremony, but we are such near neighbors. I knew you even before I was introduced to you. I noticed that you often came to our window to listen to me singing, and even at first I was not very pleased when you applauded me. I thought you were How really wonderful. happy. I simply wanted to express my admiration and to thank you for all the aesthetic pleasure you gave me. Now that I have done my duty, I shall leave you. I have an appointment with my art dealer. Ah, the black guard, he wants to make me paint absurdities because he says it's a current taste, but I am resisting. Yes, resist, resist valiantly. Do not encourage the degeneracy of modern taste. This lapse into falsehood which seems to have seeped into the consciousness of all our contemporaries in every field of human creativity. Very well, my friend. I go. Fired with a new courage to do battle for the truth. Goodbye. Goodbye. Please sit down, mademoiselle. So you are willing to introduce me to a few people to make them hear me? Certainly. One of our foremost conductors is a friend of mine. And with talent like yours, all doors will easily open to you. It will be a great help to me. Thank you so much. No, no, do not thank me. If you knew all the joy you have given me, if you knew what a pleasant accompaniment the harmony of your rich voice has been to my daily work. <coughs> I owe you many good and happy hours. Yet, it's I who should be grateful to you. It is very kind of you to tell me all this. It is strange how familiar everything seems to me here. Perhaps not so much the objects themselves as the air that most which envelops them. Excuse my boldness, 
but I feel as if I were at home. I feel as if I have been coming here always. And I have the feeling that all sorts of wonderful things are going to happen to me now. I shall be the first person to be glad of it. I must tell you a strange thing. When I came to settle in this town about six months ago, after my mother's death, in the hope of earning my living, I had to choose of several small apartments, each one with its advantages and inconveniences. The one that I rented in this house was no better than any other, but I was impelled to take it by a kind of intuition that I would be happy here, that good things were in store for me here. It is strange, isn't it? Strange, yes. Very strange. Is this a family? Who knows? You know, this is strange too. I have felt much calmer and more contented since I have been hearing your voice each day. And I had a very great desire to know you. And I know you only as a writer whose talent I greatly admired and whom I hardly dared to hope to meet one day. There are such extraordinary and mysterious things in life. Mysterious, perhaps only because we do not know their causes. Otherwise, everything would be very simple and natural. And look, at this moment, I do feel a sensation of calm and well-being and it gives me great strength. Rest assured that I shall do everything in my power to help you. It's a duty and a very great pleasure to be of use to an artist and woman like you. Thank you. I feel as if we have always been sitting like this, side by side, and that we are friends, old friends. We are friends, aren't we? Yes, from the depths of our hearts. I feel so much at ease here that I'm forgetting all conventions. And now, to crown my impoliteness, I'm overcome by an imperative need to sleep. I have been sleeping so badly at home for such a long time. I feel uneasy, spied on by invisible enemies who wish me harm. Whereas here, I have the feeling that something warm and strong enfolds me like a living cloak, and little by little, I am being overwhelmed by sleep. Lie down here, on these cushions. Make yourself comfortable. Do not let anything bother you. And above all, do not even think for a moment of customs and conventions. They are fetters of no real value, which seem to have been forged by man for his own misery. I am in great need of sleep. I have persistent pain in my head, which makes me suffer a great deal. I have worked so hard to achieve my result as quickly as possible, and my brain is terribly tired. Will you allow me? I think I can easily give you some relief. It is all right now. There is no more pain, and I feel so happy. Poor child, so pretty and yet so lonely. Responsibilities towards her too. 
How can I tell her that my whole thing is concentrated upon another? And yet, I cannot conceive my feelings. Falsehood is the only evil. Besides, it would be quite useless. A woman like her cannot be deceived. Oh, life can be often so cruel. I'm happy, happy. Dear child, what can I do? I have slept. How well I have slept. Never in my life have I slept so well. I am so glad. You see, the life that encircled you and covered me too was at once a nourishment and a protection. It was so beautiful, so comforting. Even now I can feel it around me. Yes, it's still around you. Is the first time you've seen colors like light lately? I remember having seen lights or a colored mist around certain people. But I have never seen any as beautiful as yours or any to which I felt so close. Often, around others, it is like a turbid, unwholesome fog. What is it? It would take rather long to give a clear reply. But I shall try to explain to you as best I can in a few words. Stop me if I bore you. We are made up of different states, which can be compared to earth, water, air and fire. Do you follow? Yes, it is most interesting. A less dense penetrates and flows through a denser one. As water evaporates through a porous vessel, with the difference that no loss follows. In the same way, what is more subtle in us forms a sort of sheet around our bodies. And we call this subtle sheet the orb. Magnificent! What a this knowledge might have in the world. But where did you learn such beautiful things? For I do not think that many people are aware of them. No, especially in modern times. In an age like ours, with success and material satisfaction it brings are the only things that matter. Yet, numerous people are trying to find the purpose and goal of life. On the other hand, there are those who are the guardians of supreme knowledge which has been handed down from generation to generation and it serves as a basis of a method of self-development. How beautiful this teaching must be. You will reveal it to me little by little, won't you? Yes, yes, you're right. I'm so happy to have met you at last. I have waited for so long. And are you happy? Yes, just now, while you were asleep, I felt a calm and quiet happiness which I had never experienced before. Yes, this is, this is the true love, which is a force. It is a union that enables new possibilities to be realized. But... But what? Since we are so happy together, what could prevent us? Oh, you do not know. Oh. I did not know that you were married. Do not be upset, nor you. Yes, I heard the end of your conversation. I returned just as Mademoiselle was waking up. I did not want to disturb you and was about to withdraw. But I thought it would be more useful for all of us if I heard. So I stayed. For I was sure, my dear, that you would find yourself in a cruel predicament. You know what is said in the teaching, which is for us the truth. Love is the only legitimate bond of union. The absence of love is enough to invalidate any union. I consider that when love comes, everything else should give way to it. My friend, you remember our fact? We promised each other full freedom the moment love would awaken in either of us. That is why I listened. And now I have come to tell you, you are free. Be happy. But you, you, I know you always live at the summit of your consciousness in a pure and serene light. But solitude is sometimes hard. And the hours can be monotonous and sad. Oh, I shall not be alone, for I shall go and join those through whom we have found the path. Those who possess the eternal wisdom 
and who have from a distance guided our steps until now. Surely they will shelter me. Our way of looking things and our behavior may surprise you. We are new to you and you do not know the reasons for them. He will explain them to you. I am going away, but before I go, let me join your hands. May your association be noble and generous. Noble in quality, generous in action. Be an example to the world and show all men the goodwill, the true aim of human life. You can be sure that we shall do our utmost to deserve the trust you have shown us and be worthy of your esteem. But I would like to hear from your own lips that my coming to this house and the event that has followed do not be an irreparable misfortune to you. Have no fear. I now know for certain that only one love can satisfy my being. It is for the divine. The divine love for that alone never fails. Perhaps one day I shall find the favorable conditions and the necessary help for the supreme realization, the transformation and divinization of the physical being which will change the world into a blessed place full of harmony and light, peace and beauty. <laughs>